Hi everyone, my name is Mervel. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification icon so when I release a video like this, you get notified. Without further ado, let's go straight to today's video. Okay guys, in today's video, I am going to be discussing five things that I believe that keep Congolese from the diaspora from investing back in the Congo. Stick around to the end of the video. We will all discover which one are they. Okay, guys, let's go to number one. Number one, I believe it's insurance companies. Okay, how many insurance companies that we have in the Congo? The last time I checked, I believe it's only one. So NAS. So it's the national insurance company. There may be some new private you know, insurance companies out there. In the Congo, I do not know. If any of you know of a new insurance company operating in the Democratic Republic of Congo, please feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Like I always say, we learn from one another, right? But when I did my research, so NAS is the only one that I can ever found, and it's the easiest one to remember. Since a kid growing up in the Congo, we all know the only insurance company we had was so NAS. Okay, this insurance company is very important. For those of us that live in the diaspora, we know how important it is to have your car insured right the reason why we all feel comfortable paying a certain amount of money monthly to keep our cars or our business covered because if something happens let's just say i get into a car accident and my car is towed you know what i mean then i may not have the money available to buy a new car right there and there right the insurance company because i pay monthly they will be able to cover or probably reimburse the amount that the car costs back to me to allow me to purchase a new vehicles goes the same with business if you own a business that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars right you know god forbid something happens or you, you you know your business catches fire and burns to the ground so you don't really have that money available to cover the whole costs and all the damages right you're gonna depend on your insurance that you which you pay for monthly to cover that right now think about if the insurance after all of that happens or after all that calamities but the insurance is unable to cover your costs and damages. And what's going to happen? You, without a question, you go out of business and you lose tons of money. Nobody really wants that. That's the number one thing that most people in the process of starting a business, one of the first thing that they have in mind is getting their business insured. So when something happens or there, you know, there was a damage or whatever the case may be, it was a flood or a natural catastrophe. It could be a hurricane or, you know, flood or, you know, you know, anything of that nature, you know, strike your business pretty hard and it caused a lot of damages, you know, resulting in you losing a lot of products in the process. Then the insurance steps in and covers it. But in the Democratic Republic of Congo, though, it's not always the case. I'm saying this from the experience. Well, I've never been through such experience, but I can speak on behalf of other people that I know have been involved in such, you know, nightmare and they actually spoke on the issue and how devastating this can be. The insurance company, I would say they do an okay job. A lot of people have lost their business because they trusted the, you know, the national insurance company so much that they were paying monthly fee. But when something catastrophic happened in their business, the insurance was not able to cover it. Sorry guys, it's a, they do a poor job. I know there is still room for improvement, but we're all advocating for it. And that could be a potential reason why a lot of Congolese, especially those that have adopted the Western mentality, they want everything done in a certain Western way which you can you can barely always get back in Africa. A lot of people are not willing to risk, to risk their money like that. Some people have worked too hard for their money. They want to have some type of insurance so when something happens, they know they're not gonna lose money 100%. So I'm just putting in that out there. So those of you that know the experience, please let me know in the comment section down below if you've been involved in you know, the national insurance company back home where you were screwed over or you know of anybody that went through the same process, please feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Number two is justice system. Okay, guys, this is very big. We all know our justice system. It is broken back in the Congo. Not that the justice system here in America or in the West, generally speaking, it's not broken because I believe most, you know, or country justice systems are broken anyway, but the level of in which the our you know our justice system is broken, it's outrageous. So, all right, let's put it this way: if I come from a family of influence, where like I have like a lot of political leaders or you know people of influence from my family, 
that are in the Congolese government. And if I do something, all I got to do is just make a phone call and everything, you know, they can make everything disappear real fast. But think about you doing business in the Congo and just something happens, right? Or whether, you know, somebody took advantage of you or like, you know, you, you provided them services, but then in return, they didn't want to pay the money. Of course, the only person that can step in in this particular case is, you know, the justice system. You take them to court and the court will rule whomever is right, you know, uh, you know, they will order them to pay the damages, right? But then only to find out the person is probably a cousin of somebody that works for the justice system. And as long as they pick up the cell phone and make a few phone call and be like, hey, you know, I got into, a tr I got into trouble, but can you, you know, do something to get me out of this situation? They will do them a favor, but all you're going to undergo is keep, you know, spending your money to show up there every time They keep postponing it and coming up with different reasons as to, to have you believe that they're working on the problem. You know, they're working on a, on a case, but the, the case was already over before even you knew about it. And then you will find out later they were already off the hook. So that can be a little frustrating for some people. And that would frustrate the hell out of me if like I had, you know, I was involved in, you know, such situation and I've trusted the justice system so much. But then at the end of the day, I get screwed over for something that I, for a work that I put in for somebody. So I just think that's ridiculous. So I think our government or our justice system can do a better job to address situations like that. So, and I hope that none of my, you, none of my viewers on this platform ever have to go through like that i'm just bringing these issues up to you guys so you can make wise decisions when you're starting or establishing your business back in the country you all know that i encourage most of you to start businesses back home but you also have to be aware of you know some of the issues that we have going on in the country so you don't end up becoming a victim all right so now we're going to move to number three number three is basic infrastructures okay we all know in order for you to be able to run a business successfully you need some basic infrastructures right i'm talking about like roads good roads you know electricity you know and so forth so those are the two main ones that you can rely on roads let's just say you you establish a business you have you know about 20 30 people working for you and if they can afford to buy a car or if they don't have a vehicle on their own they can always depend on the transportation right but sometimes people will show up late to work because the roads there was not many roads out there and there was always traffic. There aren't alternative roads that they can use to make it to work faster. So that can always cause problems because business never stop. When you start your business, you expect people to show it at the time you expect them to be there and actually run the business the way it's supposed to be run. But you're not going to be sitting there and waiting for someone to show up like an hour or two hours later after the store or whatever business you have going on, it's already open. So nobody ever wants to go through that, right? So in electricity, on the other hand, it's major because I can't think of any business that you can ever run uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure there are businesses out there that you can run. You know what I mean? You know, you probably won't need electricity. But if you have a store or you have a you have a grocery store, or you have a you know fresh fruit product, all kinds of things that you can ever think of, you will need some type of energy to keep the business running. So when electricity is not reliable enough, so it's going to be a burden to you because think about how much money you're going to have to spend on gas, you know, on gasoline to continue to keep the motor running, to continue to keep the fuel you know, or filled up and a generator and, and things like that. And I could also add more cost to your business. Maybe the business is good, but the fact that you have to go through all of these extra expenses that are unnecessary just because the government did not do their job to keep the electricity on all the time, you will probably end up being a victim because now not every day the business responds the same manner. There are days where everything is working properly and there are days where like things aren't looking so well. So all that balance is very important. But if you have to deal with electricity going out and coming back on and you're not sure whether you should, you know, turn on the generator, all of that can just bring a lot of frustration and may potentially hold some other people back from investing back in the country. Okay, that's going to do it for number three. So now let's move on to number four. Okay, number four is the easy one, corruption. People have normalized corruption in the Congo in unprecedented way. I mean, I've never seen a level of corruption or in any country the way it is in the Congo. I mean, not that other countries are not corrupt or people, you know, don't take bribes 
bribes or don't take bribes or anything like that. But I can't speak on behalf of other countries because I haven't been to every country in the world. But I can only speak on behalf of the Democratic Republic of Congo because I live there. I travel there back and forth. I see the reality. I know, the, I know exactly what's going on. That's why I feel the need to talk about these issues because it is an ongoing issue that we deal with on a regular basis in the Congo. So, and it is something that needs to be addressed, especially when you're getting into business. You want to do business. You want to be successful. You are serious about the business that you're doing. You have to look into all this matter so you don't end up being a victim. So those are the things that you have to be cognizant of when you're getting into any type of business. That's why I always tell people, listen, no matter what you do, we understand it could be difficult to keep a business running, but if you understand your tricks and strategies on how to keep your business running successful, especially when you're successful in your business, please pay, pay your employee what they're worth. Just because the minimum wage back in the Congo, it ain't that high, doesn't mean you also have to underpay your employees. So another reason that results to more employees to continue being corrupt and probably uh, maneuvering and finding ways to do harm to the business so that they can have something extra because their salary, it's barely enough to help them make ends meet. And you know, you'll probably, you will, they will find themselves selling the business, you know, certain business properties and you know, things like that. Of course they won't do it in a, a you know, in a stupid way where they get caught but they will try to perpetuate it as, as, you know, as long as possible so that they can have something extra outside of their salary because most people, let's just call it for what it is, aren't happy with their salary back home. So the better you pay your employee, the less corruption will take place in the workplace because when they have a salary that they can be proud of, something that they know this going to pay a rank and put food on my table, can actually help me take care of my family, I believe that can also eliminate corruption with, you know, within the work environment. So that's another thing we should all keep in mind. And then last but not least, transportation. Okay, you may ask me why transportation? Oh, well, I mentioned this earlier when I talked about infrastructure, like we, the roads are not that great. Main roads, okay. But not that everybody lives in a city or lives in an area where they just, you know, hop on the public transportation and they own the main road. There are some people, they have to take motorcycles, they have to take, you know, different transportations in back roads and, you know, all the way in there. That's probably not gonna be as good as the main roads are and that can also take time. So that's very, that's another thing that also make it difficult to run your business. Like I said, because you will depend on people to show up on time. You will have, you will want to have people to be there, including yourself. You could be the boss and you have your own vehicles to get you to work. But if you can't make it on time to, you know, start your, start your day or do certain things, it could be pretty rough. It could be pretty difficult. Some other people will say, oh, why don't you just leave way earlier? But guess what? Everybody wants to enjoy their sleep, right? You want to have your clocks, you know, an alarm go off at a certain time of the day. You'll be up and get ready and go to work. Now, everybody wants to have to go through all of that. But when it rains, most business really don't run properly. Like if, if, if it rains in the Congo, like forget about it. Like consider that day already dead. So you have to depend on other days. I mean, I think those are the issues that a lot of us have to go through. And it's something that can turn a lot of people off. That's something that can also keep a lot of people from investing in the Congo when it comes down to it. So I believe those are the five things that keeps most Congolese in the diaspora from going back to the Congo to, uh, to invest. Which one of these five you think will actually prevent you from investing in the Congo and why? Okay, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for more videos like this. Until the next video, I'll see you guys later. Peace.